The whole idea that I was going for was for it to be elegant and romantic. Most things were set and then all of a sudden it was, oh I've seen this, I wouldn't mind this. I'm like, we'll have to see if it's possible, if we can. It's like the morning of and they're like, Holly's dress is a different color, Holly's dress is a different color and I'm like, I don't care, let's just go. <laughs> and I actually got a text saying, call me as soon as you can. And it was one of my groomsmen, so I'm like, what's happening? I'm getting married in like less than a week. Nicole and Jason shared their wedding date, August 30th, 2014, with 75 of their closest friends and family in Perth, Ontario. Uh, we met in uh, Petawawa. It's a small town, mostly military. She lived in Petawawa. I'm from Kingston, so it was a long distance relationship at the beginning. But um, started off, I think, three or four months, and then actually she moved up to Kingston. And now we've been together for eight years. He ended up proposing uh, about a week after my 23rd birthday and it was down at Olivea restaurant here in downtown Kingston and it definitely took me by surprise because it was in front of everybody. <laughs> it was her birthday weekend so I made it look like it was more just for her birthday because her birthday was on a Wednesday and we did uh, dinner on a Saturday. So I took the back room and booked the whole thing and then put the flowers there and made it more like a birthday gift and we get the waiter actually with a camera to take our pictures at dessert time. And of course, as we're taking the dessert pictures, then I got down. Um, my ring engagement ring and wedding band, uh, we got at Mappins at the Cataraqui Center here in Kingston. The whole idea that I was going for was for it to be elegant and romantic. I wanted it to be small and intimate, but I still wanted like that classy kind of feel to it. So where it was the champagne and the black and white tie affair was what I was ultimately going for. Almost with like a French twist to it, like a Parisian style. And I started literally, I think the day after we got engaged, I started like planning out everything and the girls' dresses. I don't know why that was the first thing I had to pick out were the bridesmaids' dresses. And I'm like, I'll work everything around the bridesmaids' dresses, but I had like such a picture fixated in my head of exactly what I wanted the dress to be. And then once I found the dress, everything kind of like fell back into that, where it was that kind of style, that bit of elegance with it and everything else. If I had to do it over again, I would have picked the venue first. Absolutely. I think it would have made things a lot easier. <laughs> We ended up getting the flowers from McMahon's House of Flowers in downtown Kingston. Yeah, we actually had photos. So she had the photos already done and we came in with them. The only thing we couldn't get was, I'm not sure, I'm not good with names of flowers so you wouldn't know I them. I wanted the peonies. Peonies are my absolute favorite, but because they literally just got out of season, they were about 35 bucks a stem to get them delivered from Holland. So we got what's called David Austin roses that look just like it, and they're probably about that big around, so they filled up quite a bit of the bouquet as well. So ultimately it didn't end up costing us an arm and a leg for it, and it turned out exactly how I wanted it. Many of Nicole's ideas for her wedding decor were found online. Nicole, like most people, enjoys surfing the web for new and old ideas. How do those images and ideas become a reality? For Nicole and Jason, 
Misty from MT's Wedding Design helped to bring those ideas to life. I wanted something larger for the centerpiece that was going to sit higher because I know from previous weddings that we went to there would be some centerpieces of just flowers and they're literally sitting just at eye level so anybody that you're talking to at the table you'd either have to be ducking over to the side or looking up and I didn't want that so I wanted something that had a lot more height and she had all of her pictures up on Facebook and I ended up seeing one of them. I'm like, please tell me you have this available. And she did, she was great with everything. We had 40 to 75 or something floating balloons, black with champagne ribbons. And the ceiling was quite a high ceiling, I think a 30, 30 foot ceiling. So the balloons had at least a 15 foot ribbon. So it was quite a long ribbon shining down. So as soon as you looked up, that's all you've seen is ribbons and balloons going everywhere. We had a few Eiffel Tower setups at the head table. We had special glasses for our head tables with uh, like the pimp glasses, big sparkly, said bride and groom on it. We had like little um, diamond shaped crystals put it on the table as well to kind of like add to like an elegance bit of a feel to it. Um, I purposely made all of the linens black and just the napkins champagne just so it gave more of like a clean and elegant look again so that if people were spilling wine and it was white you don't see it all over the place. As a young girl, Nicole had always imagined her wedding day outdoors, embraced in nature. The romantic atmosphere of a winery with a vineyard as their backdrop was always a dream of hers. Jason and Nicole decided on a beautiful winery in Picton, Ontario. The couple decided to go to one final wedding show, the Kingston Wedding Show, to get some odds and ends finalized. It was there that they were excited and surprised to see an amazing video montage of a venue called Best Western Plus Perth. At that moment, they were sold. With the Best Western Plus, it was definitely a done deal. We're extremely happy and I wouldn't change it for the world. The Best Western Plus Perth was the caterer and the head chef was uh, Jamie. Yeah, it'd be on my phone, Jamie. Jamie Charman. Yes, yeah, and he, he's also the executive chef of the Stone Cellar in Perth, Ontario, and he was excellent to work with. He had told us that, you know, if there's anything about the meals that you want to change, that he'd be more than happy to. If there was a certain presentation that we wanted, he'd be more than happy to, to like mix and match items, like whatever we liked best, that he was great. He was absolutely great to work with. We ended up getting the cake through a woman uh, named Krista. She owns a company called Krista's Cakes in Perth, Ontario. And I was talking back and forth with her on Facebook for quite a while. And I basically just told her, you know, this is the color I want, this is what we like, so have free range with it. And she honestly outdid herself. Like everybody was talking about it, everybody was impressed. I got her to do desserts as well, and she like went above and beyond with the desserts. Everything was amazing. I was like, I was really impressed with it. The invitations, we actually got uh, template designs, like the invitation DIY box itself, which were just basic black and white. And we ended up just having them printed uh, through a company downtown Kingston called Print3. And they printed out um, the invitation and the RSVP, uh, the reception card, and they also did out the name tags for us to put on like the return addresses. And then we also had a poem put inside of the invitations. Because at first we lived in sin, we've got the sheets and rubbish bin. A gift from you would be so swell, but we'd prefer a donation to our wishing well. More than just kisses so far we've shared. Our home has been made with love and care. Most things we need, we've already got. And in our home, we can't fit a lot. A wishing well we thought would be great, but only if you wish to participate. A gift of money is placed in the well. Then make a wish. Shh, don't tell. Once we've replaced the old with the new, we can look back and say it was all thanks to you.
You are my partner in crime, my teacher in life, my source of laughter, my reason for smiling, my shoulder to cry on, my helping hand. You are my mentor, my confider, my counterpart, but most importantly, the love of my life and my true best friend. Find someone to be with, with these traits is truly amazing. I know you are the other half that makes me whole. And a call is going to be very sad that she wrote the longest poems I've ever seen, but they are beautiful. So we will listen, Nicole and Jason. Being with someone who has such a passion for hockey truly holds the key to my heart. You make me happier than I could ever imagine and give me more love than I ever thought possible. You have made me a better person as our love for one another is reflected in the way I live my life. Over these past eight years, I've learned to love who I am and accept myself because of you. I have learned there is no better feeling in life than knowing after all these years, you can still look at me and tell me I'm beautiful and love me with all of your heart. I have learned the hard way that people will always come and go in my life, but you have assured me you will always be by my side. And for that, I can never show you you enough appreciation, knowing that out of everyone out there, you chose to be with me. Words truly cannot express how much love and compassion I have for you. Out of all the vows we will take today, I promise to share all the joys of life, because with you, it is always that much sweeter. I promise to continually make memories with you, not just as your wife, but as your best friend. I had my hair and makeup done at the Best Western Plus through the Parkside Inn and Spa. Uh, my makeup took about 45 minutes and my hair took about an hour and a half. They said I have the worst hair ever to curl because it is so long and it's heavy and it doesn't hold whatsoever. Like I showed her a picture and she's like, okay, and she's like, we'll see what we can do. And she did it like perfect to a T. Like I couldn't have asked for anything happier. And she's like, you're really lucky. She's like, because I have the exact same hair. So I know that we need to use a lot of hairspray. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't do my hair. Yeah, he forgot to do his hair. <laughs> forgot to do it. <laughs> I shaved, and then after shaving, I think I was getting dressed, and the next thing you know, I think photographers came around, or something came around, the next thing you know, I guess I didn't do my hair. But luckily, I got it cut just like two days before that, <laughs> so it was still short, so it wasn't that noticeable. But when I got back, the pictures, you see my hair's not gelled, and you see little puffs of frizziness on one side and then the other and then I looked at them I'm like are you serious I didn't do my hair he's still going on about it every time he looks at a picture he's like I can't believe I didn't do my hair I, I always do, I my didn't hair. do my hair it's the one time and it's like one of the biggest things where I'm gonna have all these photos and it's the one time I didn't do my hair I'll do my hair before I go to work and I don't even do it for my wedding <laughs> So I was short one groomsman and what happened was I was at work and it was actually a morning shift and I actually got a text saying call me as soon as you can and it was one of my groomsmen so I'm like what's happening I'm getting married in like less than a week so give him a quick shout run outside and he's like I'm sorry man I won't be able to make the wedding I just had a baby and I'm just right there I cut him off it's all good. That was one issue we had was just uh, missing a groomsman but I still got it he still got his groomsman gift so <laughs> everything is still good. The way our venue was set up for the wedding, we were getting married outside on a three-layer deck. It goes up a layers, and then it arches out on angles. So as we sit in the middle, 
they are out on an angle. So the only thing you would notice that there was someone missing was when they walked down and there was one guy holding two beautiful ladies instead of just one. And one of the bridesmaids had a different color ribbon oh, on her yeah. dress. She ordered the wrong color on the dress. So one of them was like standing out. It was supposed to be uh, linen was the color of it, more like a champagne. And then hers that she actually ordered was like a butter yellow. So I stuck her in the middle of all of the girls. But like you couldn't really notice it unless you were really looking at it closely. So, but it worked out okay. I know when we were upstairs, we were looking at the dresses and it was like the morning of, and they're like, Holly's dress is a different color. Holly's dress is a different color. And I'm like, I don't care, let's just go. <laughs> like, don't worry about it now, it's too late. Our photographer was Nikki K Photography. And I can't even say enough good things about her. She was great. The only thing I would say to always splurge on is a photographer. And I'm happy that we got the photographer we did because, you know, there's always going to be people at your wedding taking pictures and everything, and that's great. But the photographer is a photographer for a reason because they know what they're looking for. They know the pictures that they're going to be taking, what you're looking for in moments that you want captured. I had told her before we'd started that I was really big on candid photos and she got us almost everything was a candid photo and I was more than pleased with everything. She was great and even all of our guests were raving about her saying that she was so social and that she was, you know, always taking pictures of everybody and like she wasn't fussy whatsoever. Yeah, and she also brought her husband. Yeah, her husband Sean as well was the second photographer too. And I can't stress enough at how great Nikki and Sean were that I'm really, really happy that we ended up with them. I would honestly recommend them to everybody. If you're gonna, you know, blow a budget on anything, do it on your photographer. <laughs> During our budget, we mostly we mostly just went with it. Because next thing you know, she wanted the tree setting, so then we looked into it to see if the cost was gonna be able to amount to something we could afford. That worked out. Then we wanted the candy buffet. So now we gotta look at buying the candy, and then our photos. Instead of having to travel at our venue, it was a park right there. So we didn't have to worry about getting in a limo or traveling somewhere to do some nice photos. We're, we're homeowners, so you know we can't sit there and throw all our money away to, for one night. But um, for what happened, it was I was quite happy. And like I said, when you look at the wedding, it looks like it was quite a pricey wedding from the looks of it, from the decorations, like the little Sorosi crystals on the things, from the balloons, from the venue, from the outside. Like it, it's a, it was really nice. Yeah, everything turned out exactly how I wanted it to. We were pretty budget conscious on the wedding as a whole, but I found while we were getting more involved in it and getting more in depth with our planning that anything that we had seen or a vision that we had had, we could do it ourselves or like the help of family and friends for a lot cheaper and still have it look the same way. Yeah, so photographer and food. Those were the two biggest amount of monies that we had to spend on for those two things there. And they were completely worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. So my sister went to the wrong wedding. So during our wedding, there was actually another wedding in the park, and that's where she thought we were. And then the next thing I know, I see my sister in the back just standing there waiting to get seated. And of course, Jason has to like pinpoint it out and put her on the spot. He's like, oh, everybody, let's pause because my sister's late. Yeah, come on in, Tanya. Like, come on. Has to make a big scene out of it. She can't just, like, sneak in. So then, of course, everybody starts looking at her. 